Welcome to today's blog. We're getting a chance to travel with Chris Ginther, our Chief Administrative Officer, up to Abitibi Canyon, where we get ourselves embedded right in the crew. While we spend most of our time at Abitibi Canyon itself, the crew here takes care of three stations, including our newest, Peter Sutherland Sr., and Otter Rapids. While a lawyer by trade, Chris is not your average lawyer. He makes his own maple syrup in the spring. He recently became an apiarist, so he's a beekeeper and makes honey. And for fun, he goes on whitewater canoe trips. It's Chris Ginther and Chris Freilich and our excellent Chris's Adventure. Before Chris could sign on a work permit, he had to take his work protection training, which he's doing here with Remus. Is he a good student? Absolutely. There were two main things going on at the station while we were there. We were wrapping up an outage on G3 and getting ready for an outage on G2. One of the main tasks on the G2 outage is making adjustments to the rotor's outer rim to make it perfectly circular. In order to do that, it has to be heated up to 100 degrees. And here Professor Pat illustrates why the heaters will need to be connected in a Y configuration with three heaters in series in each branch of the Y in order to generate enough resistance to prevent overloading of the individual heaters. Did you get that? I'm <laughs> What's the, the rating on this crane? 70 ton, I believe. 70 ton? 70 ton on the uh, big hook, 12 on the small, yeah. So task one was to lower the temporary 600 volt distribution panels down to the powerhouse. indication that uh, Dylan was talking about. As long as it doesn't go over a certain uh, wind speed, we're good. I was lucky enough to be able to ride in the crane cab with Daryl. It takes a lot of training to be a crane operator. Earlier in the morning, the guys had come out here to run it through the paces and clean off all the snow to make sure it was all safe to operate. The end of the crane rail is cantilevered out in the open over the powerhouse to give a nice clear view down below. With a crane like this, you need two signalers, one at the top and one at the bottom, and a good handoff. Given that the powerhouse is situated at the bottom of a 75 meter canyon with no road access, anything that can't fit in the elevator has to come down by the crane. At the end of the crane's travel, you can get out of the cab for one of the most spectacular views you'll ever see. Oh, nice. I asked Chris if he wanted to sit in the cab for the second panel, but his feet weren't going anywhere. Task two is the assembly of the heater circuits. And here Adam gives us a tutorial on what we need to do. Cut them all, pick them all. Each of them all? Yeah. And then I start wiring them all. Yeah, I'll get you to heat shrink them down. I'll heat shrink? All these need to be heat shrink. It uh, takes a couple seconds to get up the heat. And just kind of work it around. It's like a hair dryer, but don't put it on it's your head. It's a hair dryer, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's a nice. work of beauty. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. The production line is in full effect. So after a long day, we head back to the staff house to get settled in and then have a nice dinner. So here's what the staff house looks like on the inside. It was built in the early 90s and it's well kept by Manon, Lucy and Crystal. My favorite feature of the staff house is the workout room. Chris likes to exercise outside, so for a guy who likes to make honey and syrup, it's not surprising that his favorite feature is the ice cream fridge. As part of the G3 return to service activities, here Jermaine hangs a PC-14 test permit. Our job on day two was to, quote, help Andre and Earl with the calibration of the governor. Jeff told me not to let him touch anything. Earl's an excellent mechanic and he's exceptionally good at explaining things. But after about 150 questions, I finally got him. Eventually down the road with the PNC guys, we actually time to see how fast the gate can go from here to there. How long should it take? Uh, not very long. <laughs> we also had a chance to get to Otter Rapids, 50 kilometers downstream of Abitibi Canyon on the Abitibi River. It's a four unit station, 182 megawatts in service in 1961. And on the way up there, you pass the cutoff to the winter road that leads you to Moosonee. As part of updates to our new public safety standard, signage is now required to be visible from outer space. 
All joking aside, as we look inside the station, I'd like to thank Dan Ali and his crew for a great couple of days. What you didn't see on film was some excellent job safety planning that kept everyone and everything safe. On behalf of Chris and I, thank you very much.